Okay, hello and welcome back everyone. So today, as I've said, I'm gonna do a video on the Leica T, which I've bought for the price of something not very expensive. So, uh, like every time I, so I buy something for cheap and try to do stuff with it. So, um, this time I got Leica T for a good enough price for me at least. Um, then, as you know, this thing is, uh, what you call this thing? Panasonic Sigma Leica L mount which is this 2014 concept that has never taken off so as you can see the lens throat is quite big being a Sony shooter I, I'm used to the Sony E mount this is an APS-C area so it's not really big the sensor um, compared to E mount let me show you the E mount body cap yeah. so you can easily fit an E mount body cap inside of the Leica T body cap um, it's not way bigger but at least it's a bit bigger so you can actually put full frame in there and speaking of full frame this thing's APS-C yeah? so I just said this thing has a crop factor and it's gonna be a bit smaller sensor um, as for the sensor itself it's a CMOS so not like the M M8, M9 this thing is a bit more modern in terms of the sensor yeah? but honestly it still makes good results so um, what did I get while buying this Quite a lot actually, so this thing is not black because it has no lens on it, yeah? So, uh, this, yeah. This, I got this case with, shit, my fingernail, with buying the Leica. It also has a pretty cool, what you call this thing? Uh, screen protector because I'm not sure if they sell any in Indonesia. So, the guy actually put some phone screen protector that actually coincides perfectly with the LED on the bottom which is pretty cool and so here you are yeah. so that's the Leica without any codes essentially it still looks actually it looks a bit better than when it had the skin yeah only thing is that it's a bit slippery and as some people have reviewed it it is quite sharp especially on this corner right here so that's why I like to keep it in the case um another interesting thing is the battery obviously yeah so the battery is over here and if you're gonna buy Leica, I mean Leica T, Leica T2, TL, I think, I'm not sure. Um, do not take out the battery without watching a video on YouTube because I was obviously quite baffled when I first saw this and like, why the heck does not, this not come out yet? And so, simply just push this thing and then you can pull this thing out. See? Quite simple. Then push it back in. See? And the battery actually is the bottom of the camera. so while you're charging the battery I'm not sure if this thing charges from in the internal USB port yeah, but I use the charger like this so while you're charging this thing's not going to be open I do not like this feature I like batteries to be more of like uh, slotted in and then close with the door but this is also quite elegant and having the color of the camera in here is pretty cool so you can have a, have a what you call this thing like a panda color where you have like black on the back a black on the door right here yeah then this silver finish and a, and a black battery door which is pretty odd but someone must like it yeah so yeah then um next I'm gonna talk about the charger so this is one of the chargers I've actually liked in cameras yeah because most of them are like rubbish like the 6400 here yeah does not come with the charger the Canon G7X has a charger but then you have like this cable which you have to plug in somewhere else and leave the charger like dangling off. With this, you do not have any of those dangling wires. It is gonna be an issue if you have like only one slot, I mean two slots, because this thing will take up more than one slot, being so fat like here. But, you can put on some of these things. See? So you, when you're traveling, you don't need to bring like a long as heck cable, you only need to bring one of these bricks, and bring one of these adapters and put them somewhere else. Um, Honestly, this is better for me, yeah, but not for everyone, I think. You can also get the tri-prong. The tri-prong is like the US charging port, I think, yeah. So just put this thing in, and then do this. Then you just push this small lever up here, yeah. Push it, and this comes out. Pretty simple. The battery comes in here like this. Just look at the connectors like here, yeah. Push it in, and it locks. Then you can pull this locking thingy up and it comes out this honestly is quite good because i like battery locking systems 
on your Canon G7X if you actually like knock the charger, it might drop the battery. Yeah. And if your battery is dented, oh shit, or puffy, it will not go in your camera anymore. And then you have to like throw the battery away because you're not gonna hit on a battery with a hammer essentially. So that's a good feature. Then let's plug this thing back in because yeah, I'm in Indonesia. I need to charge. Then um, let's put this thing in and talk to you a bit more about the camera. So as you can see also, this thing has no SD card slot up here. Yeah? I actually do not have any SD cards in this camera. I do have a 64 gig sand this year, but I'm not using this thing at all. I'm using the internal memory on this thing because it has 16 gigabytes of internal memory because I mean for some people this might sound like a little bit like a very small amount but honestly I do not shoot that many photos I take film I mean I take digital as film so like like I don't take a lot of photos at all I take like maybe 5 or 10 per trip which is I don't know a bit crazy but yeah that's what I do then you have a door it's a bit flimsy plastic but it feels okay doesn't wobble doesn't rattle inside there yeah in this store you have a USB, a uh, mini USB B, I mean micro USB B, some screws and one SD card slot. Oh, I mean I'm actually using an SD card yeah, so I'm using this 8 gigabyte Mixa brand that I got when I bought the Lumix GM1 yeah, for free. So yeah. Um. Then what else do you need to see? It has speakers. It does record video the sticker, which is not common on Lucas. And you actually only have like a few buttons. So you have like the shutter button and the record button. Everything has a toggle. So the toggle like this wheel dial thingy. This is a wheel dial. These two are actually the most useful things on the camera aside from the shutter button. Yeah. So then you have this on-off button, which also doubles as a shutter. I mean as the flash release button. And the flash is actually quite tall if you actually look at it. Yeah. So. It's pretty springy and nice to hold. Now one other thing I do like about this thing is the flash itself, the flash unit. Why that is, let me show you. Yeah. So whenever you're putting lenses on, sometimes they're actually quite stiff. Yeah. And so you can actually press this thing right here. See, up and down. And that, that doesn't feel nice at all. Like I don't like it at all. And somehow like I actually put this thing up here. Yeah. I would like it to be more like, like a hard bottom out when I did, I mean put the flash in the body. Then um next let us go to the other features. Yeah? So let me go put this thing back in to the case. Yeah the case. The case I'm sure it costs quite a lot. I'm not sure how much it costs because I don't really care about the case. I only care about this thing on this body because even though it makes charging the battery quite a lot harder, I don't use this thing that much. Not as much as the G7X which I just sold. And or I mean or this Sony A6400 because like why would you use the Leica that much? Yeah? Um, Leica is just for photos, nothing else. Videos on this thing suck. They're not rubbish, but I mean, why? Why would you record this when you have like a a real video camera? Yeah. So yeah. Then let me go screw this thing back in. Oh shit, it's not shit. Straighten this thing up. Then screw it in. Then let me show you what else I got when I bought this Leica. Yeah. So uh, this guy was a Pentax fan essentially, and he shot all Pentax glass. He did want to sell me an adapter for PK mount, which is essentially Pentax K, but I declined because I do not shoot that much Pentax. Um, but he did give me one of these, which is like a Pentax bag for some reason. Yeah. Um. Then you have these Leica pouches. Where I keep my straps actually. One and two. They're all pretty much okay. Um, then you have the straps. Let me go talk to, to you about the straps. So, two, I know at least, yeah. Um, the mini strap thingy is not in the package when you buy it, as standard, I mean, yeah. And this strap thingy, this next strap, is actually included in the box. Now, um, these cost quite a lot. They really do cost quite a lot and they're pretty rubbish to be honest. Like why the heck would you make a strap out of like rubber man? Like this thing's so sticky on your hand yeah, when you wanna take it off or something and that's like so bothering. Like why the heck? So I mean this thing's okay lah. This thing is okay enough, but this thing is 
bullshit man, like, you won't really want to use this thing at all. Um, the latching mechanism is quite smart too, yeah? so let me go show you how it works. Oh yeah, yeah, and you also get some sim ejectors essentially when you buy it, so you get these like Leica branded sim ejectors, which is quite cool. Let me go show you, yeah. See? It says Leica T on it. So, this is also how you remove the straps when you've already put the strap on. Mine is, mine lost one of these like, what you call these things? Lost one of those, uh, what the heck do you call these things? Wait, let me try and focus. It lost one of these like covers right here, yeah. So I'm not really gonna care, but some people will care. Um, so how you mount this strap thingy is just like push this into the hole. This mount actually pretty clever that it can actually spin. I can tilt, but it still doesn't move enough like a cloth strap. Then to remove this thing, just press the bottom and the bottom button thing right there, yeah. So the hole in there. So you wanna like jab it with this sim tool. Top. And it comes straight out. I mean I would like that, yeah. And put like an option for either a hook or a triangle. They do supply one of those options. I mean I think one of those options where you have like the hook thingy, but at the price they're asking, no way man. Like why the heck? <laughs> uh I'd rather drop this thing than buy one of those. So let's put this thing away. Um, now for lenses. As you know, I do not have any autofocus lenses aside from this 16mm f2.8 for Sony because it actually helps quite a lot with video, yeah? So I do it like keep on turning the focus. So I've got one of these a collection essentially of adapters. So I have like Leica M. This thing's Leica L, yeah? This is Leica M. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now you're just looking at the Manfrotto 055B. So, okay. This is the Leica M mount, essentially. Adapter. 242, which I like to use the mirror one beyond. Just slots in like this and screws in. This thing can download the thing inverse, yeah. Somebody else posted it. Like this, and use it on. Um. Next, you also have one of these adapters, which is the Seven Artisan Leica M to Leica L mount. That's why I downloaded this file and printed it, yeah? So I can actually use this on this. Um, this honestly is not very good, and it's way too overpriced. This thing wobbles, like literally wobbles. It makes it sound like on the camera body, yeah? And I do not like that because, like, why the heck, man? I paid not full market price for this thing the person said this thing was never used i do believe him but like you know what he did when he said this thing he like taped the whole fucking box in with some packing tape and so then yet i had to like pull the side here off and scratch it i mean tear it essentially yeah on a new thing like i could have sold this thing for a new but yeah what the heck man so you have this which wobbles um then i have this new ye adapter thingy so I've been essentially importing adapters from China hopefully they sell I'm not sure if they will but yeah so I got this new Yi adapter right here yeah this thing will work with the seven artisans thingy quite well it's quite tight actually to be honest the thing, yeah. so if you have it on M body I do not really recommend this because it might be a bit too hard to take off but I'm not sure see you have to like really push it in take it off but then because it's tight, it doesn't wobble. The seven artisans in the other hand is a bit too loose. Um, let's see. So I have the Jupiter three I can use on this. I have the Konica three five mm f two point eight. I recently rehoused this thing in here. So last time I just like put this thing slapped it onto an adapter. This time I actually put the effort into like designing a housing for it, so it actually looks good enough. See. To actually scroll one of those. Um, then let's see what I can use. I can use my Nikon F600 lens, which is essentially converted in the same way as the Konica just now. Yeah. Only this thing's a 24mm f2.8. I mean 28mm. The Konica was like a 38mm f2.8. Then I've also got one of these in the Star 61s. 
that I recently sell it. They said I got for free for some reason. The seller was like so kind to give me this thing for free. I didn't even ask. He's like, I was like, you sent me the wrong lens because this thing has scratches and stuff like that. And turns out all it was essentially um, the optic being like loose inside. That's why I didn't have like my focusing. And the focusing was stiff because the crease was old. So that's why. So I changed the crease and now it's smooth. And this will work pretty well on the Lika T. And it also worked quite well in like the, what you call this thing? In the, in the, in the, what you call this thing? Uh, matching department. So people actually like the cameras to match uh, their lenses. That's why they actually sometimes buy cheaper 7 artisans lenses for their like chromey look. And so what I have here is this thing. Let me show you. See, look at how light that is to have put in. This, see, and it wobbles a lot. That's not the end of the start. I mean, lenses from Russia do wobble a lot, but see, I'm holding the adapter. So that's not very nice, but at least it works. Um, then let me show you how it looks like on the Leica, essentially. Yeah. See, this whole thing works. <clears throat> and it looks like this. Pretty cool, I'd say. I like it quite a lot. Um. Then what else do I have for this thing? I have a Leica T, Leica LT mount thingy, 2LTM. Although every single lens you mount on this thing will be upside down for some reason. Yeah. So usually it's like the red bit on top, yeah. With the adapter right here. Right here the adapter, yeah. This thing's patchy plastic, so it's a bit more strong than ABS. Um this thing will be somewhere down here. For some reason, yeah. Um next what I have here is also a viewfinder essentially for the times that you actually need to only zone focus like on the Nikon AF600 28mm f3.8 this thing you don't really need to focus because you just mostly in focus so you just put this thing on and return this thing gives like a about 18mm I think field of view on APS-C or 28mm on full frame um, then you also have one of these the same I just picked up because um, free shipping. So if you buy more than a certain amount, you're gonna get free shipping from a store essentially. Yeah. And to convert my Yashica GX, I actually bought another ring. That thing cost 45,000 rupiah. And I need, needed the whole order to be like 50,000 rupiah. And so this thing was 5,000. That's perfect though. So yeah, I just got this thing for nothing essentially. It's just like a bubble, bubble, bubble hot shoe thingy, which. I don't find useful at all. But I do like to like play with this thing, like tilting the camera on if I have this thing on. Um, then also I have this Pentacon, which is now for sale. This thing has an EF adapter, which then goes to an M482 to EOS adapter, which then goes to the Pentacon 15mm one see? So, yeah. Also, sometimes use this Pentacon on the Leica. Sometimes I can also use the Zenitar, the Zenitar Fish Eye 16mm f2.8. Or the Leica Hector P2 that's like the 85mm f2.8. Um, next, what else do I have? Uh, so, another good thing about this system is the body cap. So, the body cap actually locks. Like I just showed just now, yeah. The body cap locks on the body, so like it clicks. And it has like this small hole thing right here, yeah, where this thing clips on. So, it's actually in theory quite easy to like adapt lenses to this mount. Although, these body caps are so rare to find. Like, I cannot find a single one in Indonesia. Not sure why, not sure how, but yeah. This mount has not caught on. Uh, what well, has caught on is essentially the Fuji X and Sony E-mount. I do like the E-mount because of how abundant adapters are, how cheap they are. I mean, like, if you're not sure why I printed so many adapters and why I'm complaining about the 7 artisan adapter being so rubbish and still paying a lot of money for it, it's because this mount has no adapters. For cheap at least. So an EOS adapter is like a million rupiah which is like $75 I think, sometimes more. An LTM adapter is non-existent so I had to use this 7 Artisans, 2 New Yi, 2 LTM or have to use this printed adapter which in the end will wear out because it's plastic. Um, yeah so that's it. Let me show you now the software is actually on the Nika T, which warning is not very good. Let me go push this thing so I can actually move my chair around. Yeah. 
Let's pull you up slightly. Okay, there we go. So next, let's see. Let me pull out the Likati. Now this thing has one thing wrong with it, which is, which is it has a scratch. Right up there if you can see. And that's not on the screen protector, so that's pretty fucked up, but yeah. So, let's focus. See, that one scratch up there. That's the only defect on this thing. So continuing on here, you might see that, just now I said there's only like so little bit of buttons on this thing here. Yeah. So few buttons. So, what you do with this thing is essentially you just use a touchscreen. Um, info does this. See, it is actually display on any other camera, yeah. Then you have this, which is the quick settings. I use these things, and that's why I'm putting them there. Settings. Here's like the full settings of the camera, yeah. And pretty much nothing else. Image stabilization is rubbish. Auto review cannot be turned off. And yeah, that's it. Um, I'm not running from where 1.9, and this thing was pretty scary to actually use it the first time. So, to be honest, this thing is quite easy to use actually to manually focus because you can actually do this. Let me go pull this thing up here. So, you can actually like use this zoom toggle thingy, and then you can like focus. Then, when you hit focus, you can actually see it, and you can like zoom back out. Unlike the A6400, where you have to like press the thing. On the right corner right here yeah press it then press it again then press it again then once you're done you press it again you can't just like push it like you want for example you want to focus yeah focusing you're focusing you're done zoom out and shoot that's how simple it is um then only thing is that in any other mode than b like a for example yeah you cannot i mean not a in manual yeah so all these three modes can actually do that in the most most manual mode thingy which is right here, yeah. You cannot set this as like the, what you call this thing? The zoom toggle thingy, which I do not like. Um, like other things, the shower is pretty nice. It's quiet. See? Sounds like nothing I've heard before. Nothing from Sony and Lionel, yeah. The LCD is quite nice, bright. Um, this thing is the auto light finder thingy. Light sensor, I think, I mean. So, the brightness of the scene is due to this thing. I mean, it's gonna be sensed by this thing and it's gonna change the LCD brightness according to the sensor readings here. And to be honest, the brightness settings are pretty, um, what you call this thing? Slow and refreshing. And they also have like this light to them. I mean, not, not really like, more like, what you call this thing? More like, uh, stutteriness. So let me go show you what I mean. <clears throat> Let's take a torch. Ah, and let me shine this thing on the Leica. See? It's quite likey. And if you're under trees, yeah? Like, under leaves, where the trees, leaves like, like sway and everything like that, yeah? The... Brightness will actually like change really fast, like like bright, dark, brighter, brighter, and it's really not nice. It's like flickering. Um, other things to care about, yeah, is that no adapters online that you can 3D print will work straight out of the box on the Leica T. And I've seen this issue a lot about black screen on the Leica T when using third-party lenses or third-party adapters, and I think I'm sure why. So as you can see, my adapters have like these extra holes in them yeah these like random holes these things are from a Dremel or a drill because sometimes um the Likati does not want to uh it's actually turned on if you use some random lens oh it's just auto turn off I think yeah so yeah um if you depress the button let me show you yeah. sometimes it actually does this so sometimes it'll work if you depress the I mean if the this thing, let me show you without talking yeah, because this thing likes to suck in dust on the sensor. This thing right there. Yeah. So if you press that button, let me show you yeah. If you do press that button, sometimes it'll become black, the screen. I'm not doing it, but sometimes it will. 
the first time this thing did that, I freaked out, man. Like, I was like, why the heck is my Leica dead suddenly? And I was like, so shocked. And when I came home, I actually took the lens off, yeah. Like, thinking that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna move the lens to the Sony, I'm done with the Leica. And turns out, the thing that was broken is nothing. So, the thing I did, that was the LTM adapter, essentially. This thing. And as you can see, I put another hole in it, which is right over here, yeah. I mean, I expanded the hole, so the pin actually locks it in. Plus, it does not want you to have, like, lenses falling out, I think. That's why it has this feature. Um, I could care less, honestly, but, yeah. That's how it works. And, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has been pretty buggy for me, yeah. Um, sometimes you can actually send files. It will send files, but... For example, you choose JPEG and RAW. It'll only show the JPEG to you, like, like it'll, just, it'll only send the JPEG to your phone. And, it'll not send the RAW. And whatever you do, it won't send the RAW. You can delete it on your phone, really download it, it'll not send the RAW. But then you can move to the second photo, like, for example, you took this photo on the left here, yeah. Then you take this photo right here, yeah. Take it, download it, it'll download it perfectly. Which is, like, a super aggravating thing, that you have to, like, take the case off take the SD card out or plug this thing in the computer and then use it use it that way um yeah so as for image quality I'm gonna maybe show some samples that I've taken on with the camera itself it has been pretty good honestly 16 megapixels more than enough I'd be honestly happy with it on APS-C sensor um sharp buttons nice pretty soft springy not springy up. I mean more like um tactile and um which call this uh the balance is nice it's better than the a6400 i have because of the huge grip on the front and yeah overall it's a nice camera i do not really care about the which call this thing the like screen blackout thingy that people talk about yeah because if you do not i mean if you shoot quick stuff you, this is not for you essentially because if you shoot things quickly in succession the which call this thing the screen will not update so like the image preview thingy is constant it's a permanent thing and honestly I could um see I can see why people don't like it but I honestly don't really care so yeah I think that's pretty much all I talked about the Leica T um I will also be selling this thing because this thing costs like the price of a new moped and I think I don't have the money then have a Leica T um, you can also probably buy Leica M8 because I've seen Leica M9s now for selling for near to what I'm gonna sell this thing for M8s are probably gonna drop down in the future yeah so um yeah I also have this camera the A6400 so I'm not gonna be starved or deprived of cameras so thank you very much for everyone for watching and goodbye